Well, today I've been busy weeding my rock garden area uh, here at Greystone Gardens. Then all of a sudden it occurred to me that there's a whole plant group that we've never really mentioned. In all the 34 years I've been doing this, we've neglected these little chaps. And of course I am talking about ornamental onions and there is quite, quite a variety. In fact, I think in the world there's like 700 varieties. So there's a lot to choose from. So I've put a little collection together and we're gonna talk about onions and hopefully by the end of this segment, you'll know your onions as well as I know my onions. Typically there's a division. Now onions are from the allium family. So when you look them up, uh, you know, botanically, allium is the word to look for. Um, there are those culinary ones we're all familiar with, the shallots, the onions, the garlic. Um, they're bulbs and we use the bulbs to chop it up and in cooking, of course. And then there's the clump forming ones and chive is a fine example. Chives and if you pull it out, it's not really a bulb, it's just a lot, a lot of roots and whatever. I'm going to be talking more about the clump forming ones because midsummer to fall, they really come into their own. Now, if I was talking about the bulb ones, basically they would look like that in a pot. And we don't normally buy them in pots, we buy them in bags in the fall when we buy um, daffodils and tulips. And of course, they produce these long, tall flowers up there. That's the seed head. But if I dig around in this pot, yeah, I can feel the bulbs there. And there we go. That is a typical onion bulb. Now those great big ones, the globe masters, well, the problem about, I found with those is that the animals, the rodents, will discover them in your landscape and eat them. The one I really like, if you want one of those bulbs is Purple Sensation. So write that name down. And they're usually available um, in the fall, uh, mid-September, October. Plant them in your garden where you want them and they will give you a lovely surprise. Well, let's start with chives. I've already pulled it out of its pot. Chives they use in sour cream uh, decoration. And just look at the way those roots form. Now, when it gets big like this, a little tip is midsummer, I would suggest cutting it right back. Trim it right back, get rid of some of those big heavy shoots. You weaken the plant a bit and the new growth, which will happen very quickly, will come up and be much more tender and more useful in the kitchen. All right, big brother. This is big brother. This is a garlic chive. And it's a bit of both. It's culinary and it's also very ornamental. And seeds will form here, little black seeds. And if you scatter them around, you'll have garlic chives up to your ears. Garlic chives because when you, the leaf is a little bit flatter, it's a regular one, but when you take a bite out of it, it has a distinct garlicky taste. All right, culinary out the way, let's move them off there. Let's talk ornamental now. Now this is Millennium. It has the honor, the distinction of being one of the perennial plants of the year, probably about three, four years ago, maybe even more than that because my memory is a bit slack. It is a lovely plant. It will spread out, it's a great edging plant. The flowers get up to about 14 inches high. Now these are past their best. I couldn't find one actually in flower. Um, some will flower early, some will flower late. This is one of the first of the mid-season ones to flower. What is nice about it, which may, <laughs> may not sound like it's actually a useful thing, is it doesn't seed itself. You won't find millions of them around, which was actually some of the nuisances of the old varieties. They just take over everywhere. This stays as a clump and it gradually gets bigger and bigger. So that's millennium. This is serendipity. It's only a small one. I can't really show you the big one. I've got a nice one planted. Uh, the leaf is a little bit flatter, a little bit bluey green, but look at the flower. Very, very pretty color, kind of a pinky purple color. And you can imagine a clump of it looking really, really nice. Now, on a similar kind of venture, a bluey green leaf, this is a corkscrew chive. You can see if I turn it like this, it's definitely got a twist to it. And this one has yet to flower. So we've got, what do we know? August, September, heading towards September. Uh, we're getting into the later season ones. So the corkscrew chive is a very, very nice one. There's a, a bigger form called Medusa with the hair, the snakes on the end. Uh, that's very, very nice. All right, let's look at some later blooming ones. And we've got quite a few here. And you've got to be careful in the spring. When this comes up, it looks like one of those uh, little rushes. And you might weed it out. But you can see already there are lots of little flower heads. And this won't flower till basically September, October. It doesn't get very big, eight, nine inches, and it will be a, an array of purple, or I think I have a, a white one here as well. They look identical, but this will be white flowers 
and the other one will be purple flowers. One final one I want to show you, just to give you an idea of a variety. Now this is already flowered. This is uh, blue ornamental onion. It's Allium cynamium, I can't pronounce it, sky blue. And that basically sums it up. It is a bright sky blue flower. These are the old flower heads, so it's already done its thing. Uh, what I want to do now is show you how we use them in the landscape. Well, this one has been in the landscape for years, but it's not a very good variety, and I'll explain why. Uh, it's past its best, and the seed heads are forming. I have to cut these off, because if I don't, you will see lots of little babies everywhere. So, let's go and look at some of the good ones in the landscape. So, we've used the ornamental onions in this uh, gravel garden quite a lot, as you can see. Just look at this one there. This is serendipity and we use them as edging plants. They go very well with the sedums, and there's a, a donkey's tail behind here. Just the color is gorgeous against these sort of bluey green foliage and the twisting foliage there, very, very nice. And as I come forward, there's more of them in here, but I want to point out the millennium down here in the front. It's still looking pretty good. It's been flowering now for about three, four weeks. There are some old seed heads, but again, we don't have a problem with them seeding everywhere. Now, in terms of growing conditions, they do like um, sun, even though I've got some growing in a little bit of partial shade. And what's really nice about, particularly this time of year, is they're very drought resistant. So they still look great. They won't flop over if it gets too dry. They will stand up just as they are there. Now, this one's a slightly different variety, and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to divide them. And I'm just gonna take a section out using a very sharp Shovel, just go straight down. A little section out there, and you can see the little, the little rootlets. And you can see they're just like little scallions. That can be a plant, that can be a plant, that can be a plant. They don't need an awful lot of root because they root quite happily. And so from that one little section, it gives you an idea of how many plants if you want to do an edging, this is a great way of doing it. Giving them a bit more space allows them to grow a little bit quicker. So if you're looking to edge and have them all the way around your yard, uh, splitting them up like that in the spring, or now they really are as tough as nails. They are, as they say, they're drought resistant, they're deer resistant, and they are very ornamental. So we've got to know our onions, haven't we? So try them out, ornamental onions. You can buy the bulbs for the fall, um, in the fall for the spring ones, but I'd say some of these clump forming ones you can plant anytime, and typically you buy them in little pots. So till next time, cheerio till then.